Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's ServiceNow Express video blog post on the concept of update importing and exporting your data. Now in ServiceNow Express there's a number of ways you get data in using the REST API to do a post call to insert or put call to update, using email and an inbound email action to create a new record or user reply to append data. But in our case we're going to focus on the most common a manual method to insert or update your data via a simple XLS spreadsheet. Now, any table in ServiceNow that you come to and you're viewing at a list view, new window or existing window, you're gonna see that you could right click one of those columns, incident for example, and you'll have an option to either import or export. Now, let's start with the simplest exporting the data. So you could get your data out of ServiceNow from any of these tables by A, filtering down on exactly just the data you want to export. So do that filter first or remove all filter conditions first to get all your data. And then right click export as Excel, CSV, XML, or PDF. Now something that you'll notice if you do an export such as this, the data that you download is going to purely include the columns you currently see in your list view. So if you want all columns of data, personalize that list view and add every single column that you wanna see data for. But if you wanted every column, that might be tedious to add them and then remove them. So there's a quick and easy way you can pull out all this data and it has to do with when we touch on the update functionality. So when we come in and we right click, we can actually go to import. And from that import option, you'll be brought to the screen that asks you, do you want to insert or update data? Basically an insert, it creates a new record. Update, it requires the sys ID and it's column of its own. And we'll talk about the formatting in a moment. And then it'll update your existing data based off that matched sys ID. Now you may ask yourself, how in the world, if I do an update on my existing data, will I easily be able to correlate or know what all the sys IDs are? And that's the great part about this create Excel template option. Let's first touch on the update because it goes back to exporting data out and then we'll tie right back into the insert. So for the update functionality, if you select update and check mark, yes, I want to make an Excel template you'll notice that the system will actually export that data of yours that you have currently, those records, and it'll include all your data. So you'll notice here, if I come into my page one after that direction sheet, I'll see all that data, all my columns. It shows the field labels alphabetically in row one across. So you can see all the fields there. And at the end, you'll see that you'll find the sys ID. And the sys ID again is that primary key, if you will, the unique identifier that the system uses to correlate those records on update. And as you can see, since it pulled all that data out, it's also a great way to get every single column, all the current values of your information in the system. From the list view, if you were to do a filter based off your search criteria, it'll only pull back that data you filtered for. So if I did a show matching on sysadmin, and then I went to do an export from here, it'll only show me this data I'm currently viewing. Now, another thing to keep in mind is when we import in, making sure that the syntax is proper. So when you have that external data, maybe you already had Excel sheets laying around. Maybe you're using a third party tool and from a legacy system. Well, export it out to XLS format. Even if you don't have a format like that, that's going to be the end format we're going to get it in is XLS. And to get you an idea of exactly how it should be formatted, you simply go to click that insert and then create that Excel template. And the reason it's important to make that template is not only will it give you the exact headers that you need, It'll also help you understand the data type where applicable for that field. So what I mean by that is you can see here active. When I click into the active value, 
it's actually a select box that just true or false. So where it can, the system will actually limit my available choices, categories, and other one choice fields to only legal entries. And this is a very important note of importing data. And that goes for updates as well. When you import in data, you need to make sure it's a valid reference. So if it's a choice field like category, I have to pick a valid choice field. If it's a reference field like assigned to, I have to do a valid reference. If they're invalid, if the references do not yet exist in the system, its system won't automatically create them for you. It counts on and it needs that you created that reference beforehand. So from this template, you're just going to paste into the appropriate column that data that you may have already had. So your existing Excel sheet, if you had exported one, most likely the columns are differently labeled or named. So it's up to you just to align it and then copy paste the proper data into the proper column. So let's go ahead and save this and import it back in. My incident 14 template, we're gonna come in, we're gonna choose that file. And we're gonna upload. Now you'll notice when you preview the imported data, it'll actually show you all the fields that you had set with their values. So as you can see here, I set the assigned to to system administrator. I set the category to hardware and the short description to proper data. So I can validate here in this preview window any errors that would occur and basically the rows of data that I would be creating. Once I'm ready, I press complete import and it's then gonna create that record on that target table with those fields automatically set. Now a common question is, what if two users have the same name? So there I put in system administrator. What if I had two system administrators? Well, one thing you could do is right click the records and get their sys IDs, and that's their unique value. Keep in mind if you do the update template, that's another way you could get everyone's sys ID just do an update on the user table to download that template file. And then if we go back to our Excel document and this time replace that system administrator with that sys ID, we're gonna go ahead and now and save. You'll notice that the system also accepts it as a legal import. So another right click, import. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose that file I'm inserting, again, insert to create a new record. It's gonna be that incident 14. I'm going to go ahead and select it, and I'm going to press Upload. Once I preview the data, it's going to show me the assigned to field maps to reference element, but the value in Excel can't be referenced. Please use an existing reference value in Excel for best results. So this is one of those cases where it'll show you a potential error. The assigned to, it's coming up purely as that sys ID instead of that reference user. But you'll notice if you ignore row arrows, errors, excuse me, and complete that data import, when we get into the actual record that's created, it will be our proper system administrator. So that's one of those cases where the system's warning you that, hey, you know, our initial first glance, we think it may be an invalid value, but per the data you're putting in, you probably, you know, you will know best if the value you're putting in is a sys ID as opposed to a random string, if it'll actually be something valid that the system will take in as opposed to not. So you'll notice here that assigned to that got created, that sys ID, even though the system warned us, we could ignore that error and complete the import, and it was successfully pointing to that system administrator user record. So we talked about inserting records into the system via this XLS sheet, really simple, you just paste in all your data into the appropriate columns, make sure that it's a valid reference or a valid choice, and then import in. One other note on the update functionality, not only can you update via importing in an update XLS sheet, but you can also update right from the data on your window. 
So what I mean by that is maybe you want to do a mass rewrite. You know, maybe you made a new choice field and instead of hardware, you started calling it physical for some reason, you know, for your company reasons. Instead of going in and manually editing or having to do an Excel export and import to change all those reference values, another neat thing you can do in platform is simply right click and do an update all or update selected. Update selected will just update whatever you have check marked. Update all will update all the records currently selected. And what I mean by selected is not check marked, but sort of filtered down. So show matching on inquiry help, for example, this now shows me all inquiry help issues. Another example of that is these this blank caller, for example. I've got four here, blank call. Let me get rid of that filter so I have all eight with a blank caller. Call equals none. Instead of doing an XLS export and re-import using that update functionality, I can actually just right click and say update all. And this will bring me to a window of a, basically the form view for that specific table and any data value I set. For example, here, I'm going to set Beverly as the caller and I now press update. What the system will do is all those eight records where caller was empty, it now just updated callers Beverly. So that's a really simple way. You'll notice here, there'll be eight records. You'll notice here that without doing any XLS export or import, we just updated existing data values in a very quick fashion. One final note, and that is regarding the knowledge base content. It's a little bit different because there's just one other option. When you go into your knowledge base, you'll actually notice that when you open one of those knowledge bases up and you have the proper roles, you have an import button available to you. So what it'll do when you import is it'll actually take in a Word document instead of an XLS and it'll import it in, into the system. And the reason it's uh, useful and important is that it actually takes in images. That's one of the things doing an XLS import won't get you is images. Doing this multi Word doc import, it will take those images and put them right there within that post. Really simple, great functionality for importing when you have images. Now, however, if you do not have images, doing it through Word documents, especially if you have a very large number of elements or documents, the text items, if you could export it from a legacy system in some type of XLS format, getting the pure text much simpler to import in, again, via XLS. You just come into the list view of the table you want to import in, in my case, knowledge articles. You make sure you're aware of the field you want to import into. So in our case, all the text is going into this text field, the title of the knowledge article going to the short description field. So I'm just right clicking here again on the title, selecting import, selecting if I want to do that insert or update, we'll say insert, making myself that template. And then I could paste in a large amount of records simply with this template. And one thing I will highlight is you could put in HTML in this text. Here's a quick example, a bold piece of text. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take this. We're just going to import it right back there into the system. It's a little bit of styling. Since it is HTML or wiki type formatted fields, you could put that formatting in that text content into that proper appropriate column. So the last thing I did here is I filled out the knowledge field or for the knowledge base as being knowledge, basically because it's a mandatory field. If you have a mandatory field on the form, you need to fill it out. The other thing I added was the short description field. Again, you put in the field label and the value you want it to have. It's basically the title of the article. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and we're going to re-import. I'm going to go ahead and right click on my knowledge section, import. I'm going to select that KB file. And when I preview that imported data, you can go ahead and see that it, it has exactly that information I was looking for, knowledge base text. Now, if the field you put in does not exist, such as my short description, it's going to go ahead and tell us. I'm going to go ahead and complete that import. 
And as we can see, there's the knowledge article and there is my formatted text field. This concludes our video on using the XLS import and update functionality for getting your data in or out of the system from those list views with a simple right click on a column header.